I've been in the precious metals stacking and collecting game for half my life. And in that time, I've come across a ton of people who tell me they can't afford precious metals. Now, primarily speaking, they're referring to not being able to own gold, but I'm gonna cover silver in this video as well. I'm here to also tell you that it is a load of horseshit. 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 You cannot afford precious metals. I don't care how much you make in a month or how little. You can afford precious metals, and I will show you how in three simple steps coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. Let's just dive into this thing. The first step to owning precious metals is having a source of income, whether it's a job, selling your ass on the street, dividends from stocks. I think this part is pretty self-explanatory. Don't have a job? Go get one. McDonald's is always hiring. You are not too good for working at a place like McDonald's or anywhere else. Having government assistance is not a source of income. Step two to owning precious metals and probably one of the most important steps is setting up a monthly budget. Do this regardless of how much money you make. Do you have one already? Are you including everything that you put your money into each month? Do you buy coffee? Are you going out to eat? Are you getting takeout? Maybe you smoke or drink, gym membership, go to the movies, Make sure to include your rent, mortgage, car payments, health insurance, water, power, internet, gas, food, entertainment. You get the idea. Once you have a monthly budget set up, start looking at each category and how much of that category is unnecessary. At my work, there is a marketplace next door which sells these delicious breakfast burritos. And I am a huge sucker for a good breakfast burrito, but these sons of bitches charge $6 a burrito. Well, I was getting one of these every week on Fridays, sort of like a treat yourself end of the week type thing. Three words for you, treat yourself. If you were to add that up for the whole year, that's $288 worth of breakfast burritos. Cutting out unnecessary things in your life can not only free up cash for things you need, but can give you great discipline for your budget and going forward in life. Are you paying for a streaming service like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO, etc.? I mean, the list is nearly endless with those things. Most of these streaming services cost $15 a month, sometimes more. And if you have multiple, that can really add up. I haven't had Netflix since June 2018. And let me tell you, I think I'm much better off without it. Since then, I have saved $420 by dropping this one service. Imagine if you dropped multiple streaming services. The same thing goes for food and my breakfast burrito example. Maybe you're buying coffee here and there. It doesn't seem like much, but over time, it really can add up. Think about what you can cut out of your life. Think of how much you can save. Don't be prideful and start establishing some discipline now. You can afford one ounce of silver. I made this video directed towards gold and silver, but I guess most people really complain about not being able to afford gold, more so over silver. I'm gonna talk about silver because I think it's something that everyone should own. Right now, silver spot price is around 23.80 an ounce, and you can find generic silver for about 25 bucks. Try cutting out pizza once a month and swapping it for an ounce of silver. Just one pizza less a month can wield you 12 ounces of silver at the end of the year. If gold is more your deal, and that's why you're watching this, how can I own more gold, but you're worried about the high price, like this one ounce pamp bar, you're gonna be paying around 2,000, maybe a little bit more for it. Spot price I think is very close to 1,900. That's a lot of money for a lot of people to put out for such a small thing that kind of just sits there. So what is your option? Fractional gold would be your option. 
I have a few examples here that I want to show. Um, here, I have a quarter ounce of gold. I think these go for around um, four, four fifty, maybe five hundred. I, I actually, I, I just don't know off the top of my head. Here is a tenth of an ounce American Gold Eagle. Uh, I should probably tell you what day it is. Today is September 30th. And I've seen these go for 205, 215 a piece. So yes, it costs more in the long run buying fractional silver over buying a solid ounce of gold. But if you can't afford that solid ounce of gold up front, it might be a better idea to go into some fractional silver like this 10th of an ounce American Gold Eagle. That even might be a little bit too much for some people. So with that in mind, I have another option for you. Grams of gold. I have a one gram of Valcambi gold right here. It's very small. This container that it's in is a penny size container. So, um, kind of gives you some perspective on its size. But the cost of these, um, you can find them for 66. Uh, I think Atmex was selling them for $70 for one. But if you're buying more than one, you can definitely get that cost down. I, if you were to get them in an assay, um, especially some of the, the other brands, you can probably expect to pay around 80. So I was just putting 66 to $80 if you're able to save 40 bucks a month after you've established your budget, in two months time, you can get a gram of gold and still have some money left over for the next gold purchase. Grams of gold may have slightly higher premiums over buying a full ounce, but it still allows one to own gold. And when you accumulate little by little, you'll be surprised at what you can have in just a year. A word of warning though, when it comes to gold, I wouldn't buy anything below one gram as the premiums on anything less than a gram are astronomical and the price and the piece of gold that you receive is just too damn small. I personally don't stack any gold that weighs less than a tenth of an ounce. I will save up to buy the tenth of an ounce over grams simply because the premium is higher on single grams. A similar warning for silver, do not buy anything under an ounce of silver. I have two things here. This is a gram of silver that I got from, uh, sorry about that. This is a gram of silver that I got, uh, someone threw in a, into a package for me. And um, so I, I don't normally buy this, but before this huge rush on silver back in March, these were going for 80 cents a pop, which wasn't bad, but now some people are selling these for like $4. There is 31.1 grams to equal a Troy ounce. So $4 times 31, you're paying well over $100 for an ounce of silver if you were just stacking these. Uh, the same goes for like 10th of an ounce, 10th of an ounce rounds silver. These are just way too expensive. I think I've seen these go for like eight bucks. And when you were to price that out, it's like a 10th of an ounce. So 10 more of these, if these are $8, then you're going to be paying close to 80 bucks for that ounce of silver. And like I said, silver right now is $23. If you honestly cannot put away 25 bucks a month to, to buy silver, that's fine. I'm not shitting on you and I hope nobody else is either, but save your money and just go out and buy the full ounce of silver. Do not go out there and buy fractional silver because you're like, well, at least some silver is some. No, you're wasting your money. You're, you're better off just saving for two months, getting that one ounce of silver, and then saving again for the next time. All right, so after you've set up your monthly budget and you've figured out where you can cut costs, the third step to owning precious metals is having a plan or goal. I've seen a lot of people get themselves in trouble without because they don't have a plan or a goal for how much they want to stack. 
Having a plan is crucial because you don't want to set up a monthly budget only to go wild in purchasing precious metals and then getting in over your head. The price of precious metals rises and falls. You don't want to max out your credit card thinking like, oh, I'm going to buy all this silver and or I'm going to buy all this gold. And then the price crashes and then you have to pay that off the next month. Or maybe you decide, oh, I'm not going to pay it and interest compounds. I mean, buying with a credit card is, is silly in my opinion. So that's another video topic. But what you don't want to do is overextend yourself and forcing you to sell the metals you just bought to cover the cost of the purchase. Sometimes you're going to actually, I would say most of the time you're going to lose out. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give any new stacker is one of the biggest killers to stacking is comparing your stack to other people. Don't compare your stack to others. Seeing that others are buying 12 ounces of gold a month, but you can only afford a 10th of an ounce of gold can be really discouraging, but you shouldn't get discouraged. And I'll tell you why. Just knowing that you should own gold and silver is leaps and bounds above the rest of the population. Just having that information in your head, owning that 10th of an ounce of gold or that one ounce of silver is more than 99.9% .9 of the entire world. Unfortunately, most people do not own gold and silver. They are buying useless shit and storing their wealth in dollars, a piece of paper. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should not. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should only eat top ramen and never enjoy things. You should definitely. Three words for you. Treat yourself. I feel that things that were once considered a treat have morphed into an everyday thing. Kind of like dessert. It's this gluttonous attitude that has helped propel Americans to the top of the obesity charts. The same goes for spending. We, as a society, buy a lot of useless shit. Shit that won't be around in a few years. Uh, think of headphones. Is there a huge resale market in headphones? Hell no, the price plummets on those. Uh, cell phones. iPhones. This iPhone 8, when it came out, cost nearly a grand. Two years later. I think I got mine in... June 2018, right around the time I kicked Netflix. I think you can buy them on eBay for 400 bucks. Think about all the stupid shit that you do buy versus what you could have put into gold or silver. If you had bought a, gr a grand worth of gold instead of buying a, a new iPhone, you would have, technically, you'd have way more money today than if you had just bought the iPhone. And you try to sell your iPhone, you're not gonna be able to get that back in gold. I mean, you're not going to get the same amount of gold that what you could have two years ago. And that's just because one depreciates much more in value. It really comes down to what would you rather have in your life? Pizza or a piece of silver? Ah, damn, I could have bought a tenth of an ounce of gold for the dog food over the last two months. Now, I love my dog and I would not you know, skimp out on that food for her because it helps her. But... You see what I'm saying? Find something else that you're you're spending money on that you shouldn't have to or that you're like, oh, do I really need to be buying this every single month? Do I really need this? Do I need to buy Amazon every single time? Or am I just buying something to do to have something? Now, I get that purchasing type of addiction that I think Amazon and other companies have kind of fed into. And I funnel that into gold and silver. And instead of going out and buying useless shit I don't need, I funnel that, that addiction, I guess you would say, into precious metals. And as like a side effect, it's a store of wealth. It's preserving my wealth in the meantime. It's, it's basically a two for one deal. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like my three steps to owning precious metals? Your comments help me make better videos and they also help others. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.